pirates of today are more audacious, sophisticated, and willing to go to extreme lengths to achieve their goals. This heightened danger has compelled ships to take serious precautions against potential attacks. Although these vessels are robust, they are not invincible fortresses against pirate raids. As a result, a range of devices and techniques are employed to safeguard both the crew from potential kidnappings and the valuable cargo from theft. Navigating the high seas is now a strategic game, where ships must stay steps ahead of cunning pirates who exploit vulnerabilities for their own gains. The ships must use evasion tactics, advanced technology, and tactical maneuvers to outwit and outmaneuver the modern pirates. Join us as we explore the crazy techniques these gigantic ships use to fight pirates in the middle of the ocean. Modern ships are different from those of centuries past. They've undergone significant development to become the large, sturdy, self-propelled vessels we see today, used for transporting cargo across oceans and seas. Medieval ships were constructed using the clinker-built technique, involving overlapping planks secured with nails. This method evolved from earlier overlapping skin boats that were designed to be watertight. Over time, ships continued to progress due to the increasing importance of overseas trade. Around the late 11,000s, they saw the addition of a straight stern post to enhance steering, greatly improving handling and allowing for larger designs. As maritime trade expanded, cargo was safeguarded in large barrels called tons, while crew members rested on deck on leather bags. Then finally, a turning point in ship design occurred with the introduction of plank-on-frame construction. This innovation facilitated the creation of even larger ships. The need for versatile ships led to the development of the Karak, a tall ship originating in Genoa. The Karak utilized the Carvel construction method, with planks fitting edge to edge rather than overlapping. This design featured a complete skeletal framework with ribs extending to the keel, setting a new standard for ship construction. However, piracy is a serious threat, not just in the movies, but in real life. It endangers sailors, the shipping industry, and the countries that share coastlines with pirate-prone areas. These days, piracy often involves local mafia groups and illegal trade, and can even have ties to terrorism. The whole situation is like a complex puzzle that changes based on global economic and political factors. Before piracy expanded to places like Asia and the Indian Ocean, it was a significant issue in the Mediterranean and the Atlantic, and these were huge stretches of water where ships often cruise. Most pirates tend to hang out around these major shipping routes, which are basically like the highways of the sea. Piracy has now become a real problem that costs around $16 billion each year due to theft, ransoms, and other pirate-related issues. Modern pirates are causing trouble by attacking ships, cargo vessels, and anything that floats, aiming to steal and kidnap. These contemporary pirates are so audacious that they even engage naval ships and military helicopters in their attempts to evade capture. The routes they hang around are also incredibly important for global trade, as around 90% of the world's trade by volume and 80% by value happens there. All the goods we depend on, from resources to energy and various products, are usually shipped to our location. So ensuring the safety of these trade routes is vital, and the targeted ships had to develop smart strategies, most of which are non-lethal to counter these threats. A noteworthy occasion of pirates attacking ships is the infamous Seaborne Spirit Cruise ship hijacking in 2005. The ship was sailing off the Somali coast when two armed ships closed in, firing shots. Chaos ensued as passengers rushed to the deck. These pirates managed to catch up with the Spirit and alter its course. The ship's captain pulled some moves, trying to avoid the pirate ship and creating waves to damage it. At one point, the cruise ship almost collided with one of its own vessels. Some brave passengers even recorded the pirates brandishing RPGs and guns. These pirates fired about 30 RPGs, causing a fire, but luckily, the ship only had minor damage and all 151 passengers made it out okay. On another occasion, these armed pirates targeted the Maersk, Alabama, an American cargo ship, and the world took notice. The vessel was attacked off the Somali coast and the global audience tuned in. Amid the chaos, details emerged that the U.S. flagged cargo ship was about 250 miles off the coast of Somalia. 
The ship's crew managed to repel the pirates, but not before they abducted Captain Richard Phillips and fled on a motorized lifeboat. This kidnapping set off a storm of political uproar. Cable news stations went into overdrive, focusing on the Somali pirates' activities. The pressure on the Obama administration was also immense. Pundits demanded action, and the administration must respond and bring the pirates to justice. The Gulf of Aden and the Western Indian Ocean, where piracy runs rampant, account for nearly two-thirds of global attacks on commercial shipping. It was a complex operation that raked in substantial profits, particularly in a country where the average family lives on meager earnings. Pirate crews, often comprising young members aged 15 to 25, can make around $100,000 per successful capture. Many hail from fishing villages and have seen piracy evolve into a lucrative enterprise. Inside the Pentagon, Colonel Rudy Atala took swift action. He reached out to sources in Somalia, aiming to unveil the pirates' identities. Every tool in their arsenal was employed to ensure the safe return of Captain Phillips. It turned out the pirates were Somali teenagers, the oldest being 19 and the youngest just 17. Among them, one boasted a couple of successful raids, while the other three were rookies on their maiden voyage. This intel was derived from direct conversations with the elders who knew the truth of the situation. The situation got even more complex when concerns arose about potential affiliations with Al-Shabaab, a group on the terrorism watch list. The fear was that the pirates might hand Captain Phillips over to this group. The stakes were high, and the priority was to prevent the young pirates from reaching the shore. American naval warships eventually intercepted the lifeboat at sea, leading to a standoff that stretched for days. Armed pirates, facing the might of Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, held their ground. Amid the tension, Rudy Atala's efforts bore fruit as he identified the pirates' names and clans through Somali tribal elders. Despite their capture, the pirates refused to surrender. The Bainbridge and its accompanying ships held their firepower until they received approval from Washington. Aggressive maneuvers, like using water cannons to push the lifeboat away from the shore, were employed to prevent escape. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world, a secret SEAL team engaged in rigorous training on a classified military base. These elite operatives, honed to be lethal machines, remain hidden from public view. Their experience and skills make them among the deadliest predators on the planet. The SEAL team's effectiveness lies in their ability to gather crucial intelligence about their enemies and launch precise, devastating attacks. Their snipers play a pivotal role in dismantling Al-Qaeda leadership and private militias in Iraq leaving their adversaries demoralized and ineffective. For the Mayersk, Alabama hostage rescue attempt, SEAL snipers were the weapon of choice. Their unparalleled precision could eliminate threats while minimizing collateral damage. It's a strategic necessity in today's low-intensity conflicts, where both the battlefield and headlines are battlegrounds. As the situation unfolded, SEAL assault squadrons were activated. And within hours, they embarked on a high-altitude night parachute drop into the Gulf of Aden. Their target was the USS Bainbridge, where they'll rendezvous to take action. Upon boarding the Bainbridge, SEALs took their positions while naval forces kept the lifeboat at bay. It was a tense moment as the skilled operatives gear up, ready to execute their mission and ensure Captain Phillips' safe return. The suspense continued as the lifeboat ran out of fuel. The pirates believed they were being taken to the shore by the Bain Bridge, unaware that they were being towed back out to sea. SEAL snipers were already within striking distance, ready for action. They blended in among the sailors, discreetly delivering water and observing the pirates' deteriorating condition. Behind the scenes, the pirates' elders delivered a message over the loudspeakers, urging surrender. The leader eventually gave in, advising the remaining hijackers to follow suit. Yet. Three of them remained steadfast, clinging to their fate in the hands of fate itself. The contrast between the two sides couldn't be starker. Inside the lifeboat, the seasick pirates were unaware of the imminent threat, eager to cash in on their hostage. On the Bain Bridge, SEAL Team snipers exuded composure, showing that the pirates had no chance of getting out. Eventually, after a long drag with the pirates, they were captured and Captain Phillips was released. 
In situations like these, ships, whether they're carrying cargo or are part of the commercial fleet, have to employ various techniques to safeguard themselves. Evasion tactics are a common strategy used to deter pirates. Instead of a confrontation, ships try to outsmart and outmaneuver the pirates. While this approach can be effective, it's not foolproof. The issue is that larger cargo vessels are generally not as swift as the pirate ships, so getting away isn't always guaranteed. This situation called for better solutions to be developed. Piracy incidents saw a significant rise in 2010, but the good news is that they've been on a decline since then. In 2021, pirates targeted 132 ships globally, out of which 82 were held captive. Thankfully, there were no casualties resulting from pirate attacks that year. Still, avoiding these attacks can be quite a hassle. Ships might end up deviating from their course, leading to wasted time and fuel. Therefore, ships often lean towards other methods to discourage pirates, like using warning signals or deploying defense mechanisms. There's the anti-piracy laser device, a creation by the British company BAE Systems. This laser gadget is a game changer for commercial shipping in the fight against piracy. It has an effective range of about 1.5 kilometers, and instead of obliterating pirates, this laser throws them off track. When the pesky pirates come too close, this device comes into action. It's like a warning signal, making their aim wonky and difficult without causing any permanent damage to their eyes. Another common superhero gadget for ships when dealing with pirates is the water cannon. Instead of firing dangerous materials, the cannon shoots out a high-speed stream of water, almost like an impenetrable wall of water. This water cannon can also mess up pirates' plans by flooding their ships with water. This slows them down and affects their strategy. It's like a two-for-one disruption package. However, the water cannon is still non-lethal. Its major aim is not to cause harm, but to ensure the ship and everyone on board stay safe. Ships typically have these powerful water cannons placed strategically all around, ready to spring into action. They are filled with seawater and can be easily controlled from the ship's control center. Additionally, the water cannons are excellent at battling fires, making them multitaskers. There is also a clever system that gets installed on ships. This system can sense when pirates are trying to sneak on board and alert the crew. It also has a surprise feature to send pirates running when activated. It blares a loud siren and lights up the area with floodlights, shocking the marauders. Known as the Electric Secure Fence System, it is very adaptable as well. It can be set up and taken down as needed. Ships also use the Boat Trap, which is designed to halt pirates and their boats when they approach a merchant ship. It's a super strong net that gets launched to stop these troublemakers right in their tracks. What's impressive about this setup is that it's a solid defense for the ship without resorting to guns or other harmful weapons that could jeopardize the crew or bystanders, especially when the ship is close to a harbor. This trapping system has been put to the test in real-life situations, particularly in areas like the Caribbean and U.S. waters. It's also particularly useful in busy zones like the Gulf of Aden. An impressive piece of technology the long-range acoustic device, known as LRAD for short, is also a device that can crank out a sound at a massive 151 decibels, which is like a concert loud. This device can direct that sound within a 30-degree range from wherever it's pointed. The LRAD contraption weighs about 210 kilograms and can send its sonic message anywhere between 300 to 500 meters, making sure it's not affecting the ship crew directly. It's a favorite among the military crowd, but even some cargo and cruise ships have taken a liking to it. Unfortunately, you can counteract its effect by popping in regular earplugs. That's also one of the downsides because if something as simple as earplugs can tackle it, LRAD might not be foolproof. The Razor Wire Canister is another good anti-piracy system. This setup uses canisters filled with sharp razor wires to keep pirates from boarding a ship. It's actually one of the most commonly used anti-piracy tactics out there. They place this razor wire all around the ship's edges like a protective barrier. This wire, in turn, acts as a blockade, making it hard for pirates to climb onto the ship. While it's effective, there's a downside. Crew members need to handle these sharp wires and there's a risk of accidents or infections. So it's a bit of a trade-off, but still a go-to method for keeping pirates away from the ship. The P-Trap anti-piracy system is a straightforward yet highly effective measure against piracy as well. 
This system helps set up floating lines that create a safety zone around the ship. The lines are so discreet that they're almost invisible, gently resting just beneath the ocean's surface. These clever lines can then trap the propellers of pirate vessels. It's like a subtle net that ensnares their movement. Once it's set up, this system works round the clock without needing constant supervision. The P-Trap is considered one of the best anti-piracy methods because it gives extra security to the crew, works in any weather, and is incredibly easy to install without needing the crew's active involvement. Stun grenades are anti-piracy devices that can produce a loud noise and a blinding flash of light, too. The flash of light has a magnitude of around 7 million candela, and the sound is louder than 170 decibels. They do not cause any major injuries and merely aim at disorienting the senses of the trespassers temporarily. The bright flash can blind them for a few seconds, and the noise is enough to make their ears temporarily go on strike, and it might even mess up their balance. Now, the Dazzle Gun is another non-lethal weapon that's pretty similar to the Stun Grenade. This device uses super strong beams of light to temporarily disable its target with flash blindness, and the targets can be humans or even sensors. It's a high-tech light that's seriously disorienting. Superfly, an unmanned, non-lethal air vehicle, is an extra set of watchful eyes that scan the horizon beyond human sight limits, too. This compact and portable device is not only affordable, but also highly efficient. It excels at spotting nearby vessels and, when necessary, takes appropriate actions or precautions. The Maritime Early Detection System, which is not exactly a weapon, is also used for its potential for active deterrence. The system sensors and infrared tracking vision cameras work every time, backed up by the ship's onboard radar equipment. Imagine having a team of super senses at your disposal. This system's main job is to spot any nearby ships or objects, and if something seems off, it's ready to take action. In a nutshell, it's every ship's guardian, keeping watch and ready to step in if trouble's brewing. Cargo ships are not typically armed with lethal weapons to protect against pirates for a few reasons. One reason is that the cost of equipping and maintaining weapons on a cargo ship can be quite high. Additionally, having weapons on the ship could also increase the risk of violence and injury to the crew and passengers if pirates do, indeed, get on the ship. Another reason is that there are other methods of deterring pirates, such as the use of private security teams, increased patrols by naval forces in high-risk areas, and the implementation of best practices for ship design and operation. The ships could also be restricted from entering certain countries because of the weapons, if they use lethal ones. It is worth noting that piracy has even decreased significantly in recent years due to increased international cooperation and the implementation of stricter laws and penalties. The Gulf of Guinea, which stands out as the global piracy hotspot, being responsible for all reported kidnapping incidents worldwide, has reported that incidents dropped from 2020 to 2021. Beyond that, there's some positive news outside of Somalia, too. Thanks to Operation Atalanta, a collaboration between the federal government of Somalia and the naval forces of EU member states, piracy has been consistently suppressed. This joint effort, coordinated by the EU's External Action Service, aims to maintain peace and stability from the Horn of Africa to the Gulf of Aden. However, the Straits of Singapore have witnessed 35 reported cases, the highest number since 1992. On another note, Central and South America experienced an uptick in armed attacks at sea, with reported incidents rising from 30 in 2020 to 36 in 2021. The star of this surge is the anchorage of Calao in Peru, where reported cases more than doubled from 8 in 2020 to 18 in 2021. This shows that though reduced in some places, pirates are still a threat, with the ability to strike whenever the opportunity presents itself. Thanks for watching. Make sure to click on the link appearing on your screen for another of our interesting videos before you go. See you there.